What's up, everybody? This is James John, and you had just tuned in to Real Last right here on Real Radio 104.1. I am joined in virtual studio by some people that you all know and you love. Miguel Colon Jr., the man who helped start all of this hilarity seven years ago. What up, Papa? How you doing? What up? Happy New Year, everybody. It's been, uh, 2023 been a 2023 was, uh, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that good. It's like the middle season of a TV show, you know? It's hard mm. to top the COVID arc. The COVID <laughs> arc was uh, the writers were on fire during COVID. Uh, they were like, yeah. You know, this Bro. week we got murder hornets. And then mm. 2021, you know, that was the rebuilding arc. We were in a weird, weird place. Nobody remembers 2022. What happened nope. in 2022? Nobody remembers you. what happened in 2022. Nope. And mm -mm. then 2023, you know, it was good. It was cool. We made it. Let's see 2024. Bye. You know, 2024, let's we'll see what happens. But I'm, 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 I'm here. I'm swinging. I'm ready to go. All right, brother. I got the predictions. I'm glad you brought that up. We'll talk about it in just a second. But before we do that, got to introduce the man, the myth, the legend himself, the godfather of Orlando comedy, also known as Baby Idris Elba. Now it's Cub Ken Ken. Y'all give it up for my man, Ken Miller, man. What's going on, Ken? 18 consecutive tours. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, before we get going, I have to have to give a shout out, man. Because okay. um, last week for me, it was super monumental. So a lot of you guys know the improv is now the funny bone. Yes. I was the first comedian to ever get on the improv stage when it was in Port Orlando. I nice. was the last comedian to get on stage when it turned to the funny bone. And guess what? I was the first comedian on stage there you go. at the funny bone. So it, and I didn't even notice it till I got on stage. So I wasn't even supposed to be there. Lil Sean was supposed to host. And yeah. he said, I don't want to do it. And Chris was like, I need somebody to go up. And just it say hi to the crowd. It wasn't even supposed to be comedy. Hey, hey Ken, Ken, whoa, whoa, why are you just Cat Williams, uh, Lil Sean? No, I told him I was gonna talk about him on the show. I already told him. I already said I was gonna tell everybody. You just, hey, I told. He said he wasn't hey. gonna host. Hey, let me I ask told, you a hey, question, James Yon. I already when told. When have you ever seen a line outside of the funny bone? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, James. So yeah. I get there and I'm just supposed to say, hey, guys. Funny Bone is we're Funny Bone now. Tell them blah blah blah. Yeah. And the headline was, was running late, and they was like, "Do ten. So mm -hmm. I did ten, and he was like, "All right, you can just stay the whole weekend because he Who's didn't want to host." Um, Tommy Davidson, That's which up. is a down yeah, to earth he, cool dude. Yeah, yeah. Yes. He didn't want to host, but then I was already there. He was like, "Just stay." And so I ended up being the first one on stage. And now you know they got the Funny Bone sign up I on the stage. It. Um, yeah. They haven't put the Funny Bone sign outside yet. They took the big improv Fat Fish Blue thing off that right now, so they haven't yeah. put that up yet. But uh, it was cool, man. Three out of four shows were sold out. A dude came up to me, and brother, I'm so sorry, man. I didn't get your name. He was talking to Tommy. He's like, yo, I listened to you on, on Monsters this morning. And I was like, yo, you listen to Real Radio? He said, yeah. I said, you listen to Real Last? He says, yo, them brothers funny. I said, I'm one of them brothers. He was like, what? Nice. what? what? I said, he yeah, said, you're I'm, Jeff Kaufman? <laughs> <laughs> and so I told him I was going to give him a shout out, and I totally forgot to get the brother's name. I, I got to shout somebody out, too. I'm glad you brought that up. And by the way, Ken, congratulations, brother. Proud of you and happy for you, my man, being the first, last, and the first and last again. Yeah, right. <laughs> happy yeah, for yeah, you, bro. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, if it closed this time, I might. I ain't going to be around. One of y'all going to have it. to get up there. That's <laughs> it, bro. But speaking of people coming up to us that listen to the show, man, we get so surprised when people actually come up to us because we be joking that nobody listens, but we learning that y'all do. I was doing a show at the corner in downtown Orlando, and Mimi uh, Mala came up. She's from uh, uh, Peace on the Streets Radio, and she brought her husband. And he, she's like, I brought my husband to meet you. He's a big fan. I'm like, oh, you like my comedy? He's like, no, your radio. I listen to y'all. He's like, bro, I'm a real fan. He goes, don't even say anything, and I'm going to tell you how I'm a real fan. I know right now, without even looking down, that you're wearing Air Force Ones that your wife Michelle bought you. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you, sir, are a fan. He knew yeah, her he name and everything. Fan. So I want to shout out Mimi for coming out to the show. My man Bruce, that used to play for the Chargers, not the Rams. I always mess that up, man. Bruce came out, Miguel, by the way, with his That's lovely wife. Dope, man. man. Great we had guy, a, man. We had another really good show all together, though, last True. week. True. All we said it, for it, the money. All four of us, man. With 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 Kaufman, me, you, Ken, uh, call all for the money, and it's a monthly show. And we did it at the corner, and that's where it's going to be. We did it at the corner on Wednesday, and it was cool. It was a mm -hmm. whole different kind of show. It was a whole I different gotta, kind of show. 
Got to give Mr. Coffin credit. He put together something that's completely different that people are going to want to come back to because it's basically a party where you can win money. Let's be yeah, honest. It's a you crowded win, you win show, money. Man. You can win you money. Win money. And, 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 we did good. And, we, we did, did great. Good, yeah, we did good. The, the pilot was the pilot was pretty good. I keep watching. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> give it. I give it two more. Me and my wife. I give it two more episodes. I mm-hmm. get two more episodes. So it's it's real interactive, folks. It starts out with each of us writing ten new minutes that we will perform every every uh show. And when someone goes on, then we do something called the Reckle. It's a reverse heckle. We pick somebody from the audience, um, namely a person of honor that we've brought out there to actually roast them for six minutes. Now, the person that has the best roast out of me, Ken, and Miguel wins a prize for the person uh, that actually suggested the roast. So it's really cool. People can win money. It's very interactive. We do all kinds of things throughout the night where people are constantly winning something. And it's a chance for you guys to get to interact with us. So please make sure you look at our social medias. Be sure to jump on there. Get your tickets. It's going to be on when you need a stock com slash events. That's where the tickets will be. And our next yeah. one is February the 8th. Eight. February yeah, we move, we're moving to Thursday. And we oh, had a man, good just, turnout, man. It was it was a did. good crowd. We roasted Bro. up with AJ Francis from the WWE. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, top dollar in the house. Top dollar. Yo, I Yo we had last son, James. Go ahead, brother. You did the corner that same weekend. Sure did. Margaret just put me for the corner that same weekend. That's so right. the ninth and tenth, I'm gonna be at the <laughs> <laughs> straight she's doing, So Miguel, she, be she's ready doing for March. It. She, she hit is, me up. She hit me up. Do, I had to pass. She's doing it on purpose. She's doing yeah. it on purpose, man. She's right. strategic with it. But yeah, we, bro, the corner's a different spot, man. It was packed on the weekend. It was yeah. that is a great club. It's a and, good club. And man. you know that we're we're all big hip hop heads. We had another guest at the uh, show. If y'all don't oh, know, me, we had DJ Who Kid came through. Who Kid, and if y'all don't know who DJ Who Kid is, man, influential hip hop producer, uh, the G Unit producer. You know, if you're looking for an error, that Who Kid was his biggest man and mixtape king, and yes. he came through to the show, mm-hmm. and uh, he had a blast. Who loved it? Like he was telling me, he loved it, and uh, he loves comedy, so it was cool having him there, man. And we had one of your boys out there who I'm a fan of, man, uh, my man Rowdy. Like I'm, I'm oh, fan of Rob. Him. Yeah, man. Got <laughs> Rob, man. He got a couple mil lights in him. Ain't nobody a fan of him anymore. <laughs> yeah. I, when I see Rowdy drinking whiskey, I'm like, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. My own boy Rowdy, when I see him drinking whiskey, I'm like, I'm out. And hey, Miguel's not joking. He told everybody in the audience, leave. Come on. Get up. Yeah. <laughs> to go. We got to go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's funny you say that because, you know, I'm not drinking for the month of January. Tell them and, what diet you on, man. Yeah, Tell them what I'm, you're doing. I, I'm not allowed to talk about it because as a Christian, oh. you guys should not know that I'm fasting for okay. to get closer to God. Got um, it. But the Daniel fast. But anyway, um, <laughs> you get so, close to God because you're gonna die. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That too. <laughs> Bro, y'all been around me when I've been yes. drinking. And yes, I have. asked a couple people, my wife say I'm annoying. Do y'all think I'm an annoying drunk? My wife no. said I'm annoying. Hey, hold up, man. Somebody's at my door. <laughs> 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 and so no. I asked my favorite bartender, Josh, at the Funny Bone. He says, no, nah, you're fun. And the other Josh said, no, you loud. You loud. Okay. He said, you loud. But I'm like, am okay. I annoying? You should have told him, well, tell me I'm black without saying I'm black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, no, I think you know my wife I... think I'm annoying because I come home and I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing. I'm singing and... And like, come on, dance with me, mama. Come on. Well, let me tell you buddy. this. This is the truth. Mm. Anybody mm. you're in a relationship with, if they're drunk and you're not, they're annoying. Yes. That's the key. That's the key. Now, your homeboys ta- don't think that. No. But yeah. But you know, when you all you school, women who go to brunch and get drunk and come home and think you're fun. Everybody, when dude come home from the bar, yeah. like, baby, come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> No, because what happens is everybody who's drunk when you're when you're the sober one and you're dealing yeah. with drunk people, drunk people are super self centered, and yes. so everything is stop stop. The, I want but, but I want some KFC. You're like we're on I four, but just turn around, <laughs> turn around. You know I've been fiending for KFC uh, all day. Uh, yeah, because drunk uh, people when you're drunk and, and you're not so because when we're all together we're all drinking and hanging out and having a good we time. We are, and then when mm-hmm. if we're sober, it's like whatever because we don't have any like. I can walk away at any moment. When you're sober with your homeboys, you can just leave at any moment. Oh, I'm not digging yep. this anymore. When you're yep. in a relationship and one person is drunk and the other person is sober, they are annoying. They're always annoying because they're you got a baby. Even when them. they're being sweet, you got yeah, you got to just attend to them. And like yeah. sometimes when they're or when they're super sweet, it's annoying. They're like, just I'm sorry, baby. 
I'm sorry. Don't, hey, don't be mad. Don't be mad. Don't be yeah. mad. I'm not mad. Yeah. I'm not mad. Oh, I'm watching. God. I'm watching goddamn Netflix. I'm not mad. I'm having are a great time. You, are, you, are you mad at me? Are you? Mad? Are you mad no. at me? Yeah, no, I'm not mad. Why would I be mad at you? We we gonna do it. Hey, you know? hey, this this is crazy though, man. Uh, so this weekend it was a dude and that was like drunk, drunk. Like they had to call the paramedics drunk. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm Dang. coming back in the club. I I run into the gurney. Like I slam into the gurney. I'm like, what are, what are y'all doing here? And I'm joking. I said, did I kill somebody? You know, and yeah. they looking at like, what? I said, I'm the comedian, you know, because the joke yeah. bombed with them. They didn't even oh, laugh. Yeah. Yeah. They had to, they had full attitude because they was mad because they came all the way up there and, and they had to do nothing. So oh. I go in and I see the dude like with his head down on the table and I see him with a girl. And we're all over there joking like, you know, it'd be crazy if this was their first date. That'd be messed up if he drunk. And an hour later, I found out, guess what? First no. date? It was their first date. And when the uh, paramedics came, she didn't even remember buddy's name. Oh, that's why he was drinking. Bro. The day wasn't going good. That's why. Bro. So <laughs> I, she, was, she was on the phone the whole time. And I'm yeah. like, is she calling trying to figure out how can I get this dude home? Yeah. Like she's trying Ooh. to call somebody like, yo, do you know um, Him? Craig? <laughs> She's just calling random numbers. Hey, I'm with, I think, Jonathan. Wow. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. What would y'all like, do? Uh, what would y'all do in that situation? I'd be like, hold on, man. Let me let me make a call. And I just, I'd walk out and be like, I'm hey, not coming back there. I would have put him on the gurney. <laughs> yeah. <I'll> take him <laughs> home. <laughs> take him, man. And then Dang, just give him a catheter. Give him a catheter. Him. Bro. Give him a cat. <laughs> right up there. <laughs> He's, he was complaining about his prostate. He, yeah. he needed yeah. all that check. He need all yeah, that. him right mm-hmm. in the face. <laughs> That's funny. Bro, why would you get blackout drunk on a first day? Yeah. Oh, I think I know yeah. because you're an alcoholic. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And and, mm-hmm. and now she knows. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. oh, now, now, now we're dudes. Yes, and she now this is a dude that got drunk. If it, if you flipped it and it was a drunk girl, would you give her a second date? No. No, nah. but you want to she gonna be... nobody who gets blackout drunk at the imp. Mm. This isn't we went bar hopping all night long and I'm drunk too, but you can't drink as much as me and we Facts. messed up together. Because if you're bar hopping all night long and then all of a sudden she's passing out, you're like, damn it, I gotta call one of her friends to come get her something. Mm. But we were drinking all night long. This is the mm-hmm. improv. You get it, it takes 15 minutes to get a drink because it's, yeah. it's served, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It takes time. <laughs> So, but it said, "Give me six shots." Yeah, because <laughs> I know you ain't. Because you know you do that at the bar. Give me two yep. now, because yeah. I ain't gonna see you for an hour. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Give me now, six tell, shots, bro. I tell you this though, and this is messed up on my part, but we all know it's true. If this was a woman and she was passed out like that, you you got to figure out a way for somebody to get her home. You don't yeah. have to take her home because you. you, can't, you can't, yeah, but, but if it's a dude, her. we all know be like. Best of luck, on. buddy. Right. Yep. Yep. Wake yeah, up. Wake own. up. Wake up in the parking garage. You still no. in your car. <laughs> I would Sun do this that for came you. up. I would get you to a pinch. I would type, get your cell phone, type in an Uber address to the Waffle House, yeah. put your phone on your chest, and let you go. No, nah, man, not bro. me. I'm just like, well, buddy, best of luck. Best of <laughs> luck. <laughs> hope it all works out for you. Yeah, <laughs> dudes, bro. Sure, we hope you don't get we ain't, I'm out. Mm-mm. We ain't ish, bro. We <laughs> <Yeah>. ain't. <laughs> hey, there's a world of uh de- double standards, and there you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right, I'm, guys. I'm gonna roll him on his go. side so you don't choke on his vomit. There you go, brother. <laughs> like a don't, baby. Don't, don't go anywhere, people, because when we get back, we're gonna be talking about something that uh you all have probably heard all about on the internet, unless you've been living under a rock. We'll be right back, right here on Real Last Real Radio 104.1. Everybody, you are still listening to Real Last right here on Real Radio 104.1. I'm your host today, Mr. James John, in the big chair, joined in virtual studio with my good friends, Miguel Colon Jr. and Ken Miller. Now, we want to remind you guys, if you are not following us on social media, you got to do that. That's right. I need you to go to Instagram, Facebook, and follow us. And now go to YouTube. You guys can subscribe. What are we up to now, Ken? We trying to get the subscription up, man. man the numbers we trying up. to hit 200. We're like 185. Video's doing good. Come We're on. getting about 75, 80 views for video. So, okay. man, if y'all listen, it's easy. You Every day you jumping on YouTube. 
Yep. You know what I'm saying? 35 million of y'all just watched the Shannon Sharp interview. You can go, <laughs> you can just jump right over the real laugh and just hit subscribe, bro. Bro, we are Come just on. like Club Shay Shay with all the fame, without the fame or money. So that's the only difference, man. So go ahead. <laughs> Tune in and watch all the hilarity happen, man. So, elephant in the room, y'all. We just talked about it a little bit, brushed up against that topic. I know we've all watched it. We've all seen the clips, man. Uh, Mr. Uh, Shannon Sharp had Cat Williams at the beginning of the year. He had him on his show, Club Shay Shay on YouTube, and Cat decided to choose violence, man, at the beginning of the year, man. He let a lot of people have it, put a lot of people on blast. And I wanted to come here and, like, and just get you guys' opinion, your takeaway on what we heard. Is it true? How much do you believe? And how much is BS? Ooh. I start off with this, with this part. Uh, anything I've seen where they've put side to side evidence on, boom. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I yeah. saw the Cedric. I saw the 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 Cedric the Entertainer clip. I loved that clip of him talking about black people being spaceship pilots. Uh, yes. I loved, I loved Comic View growing up, and I never had seen the Cat Williams clip or remembered it. When they put it side to side, I will say this. If you're a civilian and you ain't in the comedy game, you might say, oh, but those are different jokes. When you're in the comedy game, you see that you go, ah, I know I'm, that, that my man took the mannerisms. He took this. There's things you can and can't do when it comes to having like uh, similar ideas. You know, we, we, we've all had a joke. We've seen somebody else do. There's certain things that people are going to talk about that we all think about. Yeah, but puppy, when you puppy. include mannerisms and things like that that are selling it, it's very difficult to say that this is just thinking along the same lines. Yeah. And uh -huh. uh, I do parallel yeah, thinking. I, parallel thinking. Yeah. I don't think after I saw the the Cedric the Entertainer uh the clip again and I saw Cat Williams talking about it, I think that there is definitely some evidence on Cat's side that this isn't parallel thinking. This is probably no. more the lines no. that somebody take it. Now, without defending joke theft, which is what I'm trying not to say here because there's a lot to it. Yes. I don't know. Also, you got to know, guys, and this is one of the worst times. You, you, I don't know if this is also a case that you saw something and didn't really think about it and, 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 and copied it because there have been times where you, I think all of us think like they got some idea and then you see something you're like, damn, did I hear that somewhere? But this is where I stand for, again, saying that I don't think it's parallel thinking. And I'm not trying to be too political because I don't know Cat. I don't know Cedric. We're not going to run into each other at the new funny bone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I think that I do think if you got if you gun to my head, you say, Miguel, what do you think here? I think this is a case of somebody taking somebody's successful joke because the mannerisms of the joke. Yeah, it was, it, was, yes. it was too much alike. It was too much alike. It was yes. too much alike. It, it's funny you say that about the whole thinking like you hear a joke, son. I, I had a conversation with a comic this week, and he was telling about something that was going on in his life. And no lie, I saw a joke about it. And I sent him the joke. I said, yo, we were just talking about this yesterday. He was like, Ken, I just wrote a joke, and it sounds just like this. And I said, mm. don't do it. Don't do I it. I said, don't, just don't do it. Yeah. Well, what if I rewrite it? I said, unless you can re 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 rewrite it. I said, don't even do it because right now people think if you any, if if I say chicken and Miguel say chicken, oh my God, Ken the stole Miguel joke. Yep. I said, right now it is a powder keg of that. But but I mean, he he put them getting back to cat. He put them receipts out like with yeah. Mark Curry's um, box joke and Steve Harvey doing it. Like it's yeah, it's the same. Joke. I never and even then, I never even, even thought about the TV shows though. I Me never neither. even thought about Mr. Me Cooper being then. so much like Steve Harvey's show. Me neither. And I love the Me Steve neither. Harvey show. I thought it was a great show. I did. Me yeah, I, I thought did. that a long I time ago. Because what not. was funny, they were parallel. They were almost the same show. And here's why. Because somebody brought it up years ago. Because I don't know if y'all remember this, but who was it? D.L. Hughley said that Damon Wayans stole his show. The Hughleys, y'all remember the Hughleys? Yeah, yeah. Hughleys, yeah. Y'all remember Damon Wayne's show? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's the same show. But but yeah. then I I get to thinking about it, and I'm like, everybody, everything's then stolen. Nothing in Hollywood is original. Yeah. They, take, they, they take a, they they yes. take they take something. New York Undercover is just Miami Vice. That's it. Yeah, New York, you know, New York, New York Undercover, Undercover was Life. Dick Wolf's black TV. Well, it's Dick Wolf, yeah. right? Yes, it was I'm yeah. gonna tell you, black I'm gonna TV tell you show. one more. All these people owe 
this black show their entire career. And they were some of the highest paid TV actors at one time. Friends is yeah. just living single. Yeah. yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. That's, it, all, it's, that's it's, all it is. It's, it's, what, it's what it is. It was another one. Because everybody thing too, was living giving... singles just living singles just a different world. Yeah, they out of college. Out of college. <laughs> You're right. They yeah. out of it's, college. Living single is just a different hey, world. Hey, 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 hey. Good times Cosby show. The parents yeah. are just successful. Just successful. Yes. That's just it. Just successful yes. parents. You, you know what right. I mean? Like it, it, it's what it is. Like, for instance, people people were giving Bernie a lot of credit, and we always do, but then somebody posted a joke this kid did at the Apollo. He was like 20, 10 years old. The stuttering joke that Bernie did. Mm -hmm. About the yeah. and then and then Bernie did it, and I had to tell people it's a street joke. That's a street joke. It's not a even a joke. jokey joke. That's a that's a stock joke. It's not and a joke. I'm glad joke. you brought that up because some people don't know what that means. People who don't do comedy. And I had to street. explain it to somebody on the internet because yeah. they were a like stock. Bernie out here stealing jokes too. No, I no, said man, joke. I said ninety percent of comedians have have thrown a street joke in their set. set. Especially mm -hmm. when you young and you running out of time. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. you're like you know what? Let me do this joke, my daddy. Told me yep. when I was a kid, you know, dude. For my first five years, I closed with the F ice cream joke. That's right. You know what I mean? That's but right. I didn't yeah. know it was a street joke till Tight mm -hmm. Mike. Shout out Tight Mike pulled me to say, says, Hey man, you funny. You don't even need that. I said, What do you mean? So and so gave me the joke. He said, Bro, that's a stock joke. And I said, What's yeah. a stock joke? He said, well, It's a yep. street joke that everybody mm -hmm. uses throughout the years. Never and, knew that. And that's what happened to Cedric also with the Bominicious joke. That's a street joke. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, come on, man. Everybody women. come about malicious, man. Everybody yeah. come about malicious, man. Go ahead. Yeah. Right. Everybody well, come hey, about hey, hey, and design the women ain't nothing but uh, Eve. Yeah. <laughs> she owned a clothing store. That's <laughs> no, Eve ain't nothing but designing <laughs> women. Designing women. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah first. Everybody, yeah, yeah. everybody show. I'm, dude, but I'm going to go back to what Miguel said about the parallel thinking. Mm -hmm. he, his The joke he did was so spot on. Yeah. Like the parallel thinking to me is me, Mike Hurley, he and Justin Lawson were all on the same show, and each one of us did a joke about the first time we smoked weed. Not nail joke. It wasn't even the same. It was the same. Yes. Yeah. It wasn't the joke. wasn't the same at all. Absolutely. It's just, it was just our first time. It was our first time smoking weed. Our yeah. experience with it, but no mannerisms, no. no it was. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but his, but it, said said who I think is hilarious. I don't care what so do I. William say. So do I. Said so funny. It, it he it was the mannerisms. For, I'm with you, Miguel. It was the mannerisms. It was the mood. The the yeah. the it, it was everything. Yeah, the steering to what wheel Kenneth, and the pop. What yeah. Ken is talking about on stage sometimes, if we are pretending as a uh, comedian, we'll do something called an act out. You are physically acting out some kind of story. And Cat Williams, back in the day when he was known as the Cat in the Hat on Comic View, did a joke about black men driving a big car. And he turned up the radio, the music is playing, and he's switching the gears, and he's looking in the mirror and all that. And then said did a joke on the Kings of Comedy where he just changed the Cadillac to a spaceship. Black people driving big vehicles. So, yeah, if you know a comedian is already doing an act out and you saw him do that joke and told him how funny it was, then a couple years later you do it on a special, you're going to raise some eyebrows. Somebody's going to come and say, man, yeah. you stole that joke. Yeah, it's on a special on a special, that's yeah. the, that's the thing when it that, I think that's the thing you shouldn't steal period no but don't put it on the most successful comedy tour of all time yeah, yeah. you know what I mean you yeah can't, you can't steal you can't steal something like that and then you put it on the most successful black comedy tour of all of its time. time when yeah. you steal when you steal other people's material and and the big thing about it is you're taking away their chance of success now yep. because that's the clip, especially in these days, that's the clip that could go viral for you. And now people are going to be like, no, that's not yours. And yep. you're the one who, and the thing is, yep. when the person the steals, TV another first. big part of them stealing a joke from you is they just took it when it was ready and made. They didn't build it. You, you worked that in a you club for a year until for you years. figured out everything that worked. And then it they was, just took it. It was your baby. It was yeah. your baby, man. You raised have, have you guys, I've had jokes before that I've seen other people do that is similar thinking. They didn't steal it from me, mm -hmm. but they did it better or they did it on a bigger platform. And now I'm like, well, you got to stop doing it. Got to stop doing it. I, had, I, I used to have a joke that I would it, 
years before I ever saw like John Mulaney do it. And he didn't take it from me. He just thought it was all about law and order, how everybody continues working their job when they're talking to the cops and law and order. And, you know, they're yep. sitting there just washing dishes like, I can't believe Miss Mendez died. She was such a night lady. And my joke used to be about, oh, the minute I'm talking to police, I'm making this the longest break I can get. I'd be like, mm -hmm. hey, I got to take a break, y'all. The police need to talk to me. And I'm like, come on, let's walk down the street. I'm like, I'm running errands while talking yeah, to the cops, yeah. stretching it yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, yeah. hey, dude, dude, still putting groceries on the shelf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He came through here by 7 p.m. Yeah. 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 I yeah, said, that guy the police always, wears, always wears a turtleneck and stinks. Yeah. yeah. I said, what? That's on the clock <laughs> That's break. very specific. <laughs> That's it, man. I said, the cops come to me. That's what I said. I said, the guy's shocking stuff and groceries. I like, the cops come to me. I was like, yeah, let's talk. And then I'm like, we walking and talking. We get all the way to my apartment. I'm vacuuming, blah, blah, blah. I come back to work, and I'm like, the police needed to talk about a murder. I needed to help them out. But I saw Mulaney do it, and it was different. His whole pitch turned different, but his main focus was on how you'd still work and while you're talking to cops. But, man, it was better. It was yeah. better. And I was like, well, no need for me to hold on to this. And people be like, that's just like the John Mulaney joke, unless I'm going to work it out to be better. And at that time, I was like, I don't want to work this out to be better. He did a better version. Yeah, that happens a lot, man. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking when somebody does a better version of something you or it's a more popular version because you're like forever. Ken might have the better joke about hitting a kid with flour. But man, if if that ends up on the next Steve Harvey special, that is <laughs> Steve Harvey's joke, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yo. Steve just out here doing flower jokes now. Man. I, 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 quick, try, though, I, I try to have his back, but I ain't met him yet. Yeah. But here's what I want to <laughs> ask y'all real quick. How, let's be honest, how often do you think that really happens where uh, a bigger comedian is working with a lesser known guy on the road? He might be even on the road with this dude and just decides, I'm taking that. Enough, enough time for it to be a problem. I, I, I think so. I and think, I think so now. Too. I think now in the era of TikToks, it's even worse because you will mm. see people make skits out of our jokes. Yeah, they make a skit about it, and then people are like, "Oh, you didn't see, you know, Big Eddie's new skit about hitting his kid with flour," and you're like, "What?" You're like, and he's what? like, "Yeah, he got 17 million followers." And you're like, "That's <laughs> my joke." You know, and they're like, "Nah, it's his." Nah, skit. it's okay. It's yeah. his skit. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, yeah. I, I just I forgot about that. We go. That's right, man. You could do yeah. a skit off a joke, and it's yours. It's your skit. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and and people don't even know that they, they, it was some comic in a popka that they have no idea who it is, and buddy yeah. done took it and ran with it. Yeah. God damn. And yeah. That, and that's okay because that's what TikTok was set up to do, man. Hey, that's, that's, what, the, that's what the internet the is, comic. man. The internet is just stolen memes, bro. Yeah. For wow. real, it's a dude that I follow. I actually unfollowed today. Because in 2024, I ain't taking it. He just posts, he just take copies to me, posts on his page, no 17,000 likes, a thousand shares. And I'm like, that's not even here. But everybody in the comments like, yo, that's mad. You so funny. And then he has, he calls himself a comedian. Oh. I'm like, but you're not a comic. You're just taking memes, putting him as, as your status and getting a lot of love. Like, it's, but you're not a comic. You're not doing anything original, my and dude. These Come same on. people could have the chance to platform other people be like hey post of the day comes from blah 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 yeah hey don't go nowhere guys we're going to continue this conversation we get back right here on real last real radio 104.1 back everybody you are still following us listening to us on real last right here on real radio 104.1 i am james your host tonight I want to remind you if you don't follow us on social media please go to instagram facebook and now even youtube like subscribe comment share all the hilarity so we can keep this train going i'm joining virtual studio tonight with mr ken miller and miguel Colon jr now we were just discussing the cat williams interview on club shay shay with shannon sharp man all the different things that he said about people stealing jokes and he also talked about something that i wanted to bring up to you guys because we've been accused of being this too he talked about in hollywood there's gatekeepers People that won't let you in or get to a certain level of success when it comes to being a comedian in the Hollywood industry. Now, Cat is an, a comedian that's not on your typical route to success as far as most comedians that we see who start comedy, get bigger, get on TV, and, and regularly do movies. Cat's one of these guys who kind of worked outside the lines, outside of normal Hollywood, but he still sells regardless because he is undeniably funny. Now, We've been accused of being gatekeepers before, all of us on this show. Like we've been, 
He was like, I'm like, bro, what am I keeping you from? What yeah. gate am I holding you what from? What bowling alley did you want to perform yeah, at? Right. <laughs> I'll get you a show there. <laughs> What cruise boat that can't pass OSHA standards have you been interested in performing on, bro? Bro, so I wanted to ask you guys, do you guys believe what Kat was saying about their truly being gatekeepers when it comes to black comedians trying to be successful? I do. 100%. I do. I do. And not yeah. even black comedians, black Everyone. actors and actresses. Look at the, the aunt from um, Fresh Prince. She 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 was blackballed for twenty something years by her look, own or Will Smith. Yeah, yeah, look at look at Monique, Monique yeah. for years. Only all, Daniels, all because, Oprah Winfrey. All because Monique wanted more money to go do mm -hmm. promo. Y'all paid me to do this movie. You didn't pay me for promo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and look then she Dave got Chappelle. blackballed. They Chappelle. wanted to, they wanted to, if Dave Chappelle if Dave Chappelle didn't have the the fortitude to be like I'm gonna do things my way. Yeah, Dave Chappelle. We would not have had a, a, a renaissance of Dave Chappelle, yeah. you know, and like Dave Chappelle said, you know, like Dave Chappelle always says uh, for all the people who, you know, you got to know this too. Dave Chappelle left on his own because he wasn't feeling it, came nope. back on his own, made his own deals. But remember, they were trying not to pay him for Chappelle show on Netflix. That's right. That's there right. is. And I, and I tell you this, too, man. And it, 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 it goes to so many groups because there's a huge one for uh, like women. When it comes to pop singers and stuff, mm -hmm. when have you guys, we all know, and I'm going to say this and there might be backlash, but hear me out. We know that there are so many women that are considered unattractive that have amazing voices, but where's yes. their representation in music? Yes. And I mean, maybe yes. I sound like a, I'm going to sound like an a hole, but I'm going to say it. There's some ugly ass woman with an amazing voice out there. Looks like she got six punches straight to the face. You know, you it, nobody wants it. Right, right. Everybody's like, oh, this girl, ugly, ugly, ugly. I'm not making fun of ugly people. I'm saying there's somebody out there that is that, that is the voice of an angel. Yep. And there's an a and r out there that's like, nah, man, I'm not taking that risk. Yeah. yeah. I'm not yeah, taking absolutely. that risk. Dude, absolutely. Instead of, absolutely. Think about this. The 90s, CNC Music Factory. They had a whole yeah, they, big girl in the background singing, but had some pretty little yeah. light-skinned chick up front. And it's not a hundred percent. And man, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to like bash men because I ain't bashing us team men. We winning. Woo. But I'm <clears> saying <throat> this, man. Uh, it is less on men with looks and entertainment as more as other things. Because yeah. in I say this with men in entertainment, you don't have to look good, you have to have a good look. So if there's a way they could be like, hey, take Miguel, DJ Khaled him up, put some chains on him, boom, we're gonna sell him. But they're not gonna, you know, you're right. Miguel, you're right. We we get more leniency. We gotta mm -hmm. just have a good look. And it, there's other things be, where it flip yeah. flops on. But when it comes like 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 women's sports, you know, like uh, you know, in men's sports, you gotta be good. And um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gonna get it. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, man. Like seriously, though, I, I here's the deal. There are, I think, there are more unattractive men. I know it's unattractive, man, because they're still good looking in the sense. There's more men who aren't on that high end of traditional attractiveness that do yes. well in Hollywood Absolutely, than women. Bro. But there's other stuff where men get blocked because there's all types of gatekeeping. And it's mm -hmm. really all based on, and this is where I think gatekeeping comes. There's two ways there's gatekeeping based on like jealousy and stuff. And, and I don't yeah. know all the ins and outs of those, but mm -hmm. there's gatekeeping based on, I don't want to take that risk. Yeah. You know, there's I gatekeeping. On, I don't want to take that risk. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, you look at you look at there's some comedians that there's like we know, especially because we know the game of comedy, we know this ins and outs. There's people that I have no clue why never became bigger than they were than we thought they would become. But That's I true. also know there's some gatekeeping. Now I will tell you this: the TikTok era is changing a lot of that. Talk about because it because if 6 million people think you're fire, it's hard to close a gate on you when 6 million because at that point, you can say a, a friend of ours, a friend of Mike Busey's and mine is Joyner Lucas. I don't know if you guys know Joyner Lucas the rapper. Definitely know yeah. Joyner Lucas, yeah. A great guy. And Joyner told us how many times. He said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like they were they were trying to get me to be a ghostwriter. They were like, no, this is what you got to do. This is what you got to do. And he's like, I just went out there and did my own thing. Did my own shows. Did my own thing. And then they come back to you. This is the same thing that happened to Drake originally. They come mm -hmm. back to you wanting to give you a deal. And at that point, you're like, I don't know if I need your deal. 
Yep. What do I need your deal for? And the TikTok era is changing that because there's so many comics, there's so many actors, there's so many musicians out there that they're on TikTok, they're on doing their own thing. Six million people love them. And then at that point, the A&Rs and all these people in the industry, it isn't about taking a risk anymore because they know you're going to be successful. But now you as the artist have the choice to say, I don't want, I don't need you. Yeah, especially yeah. for comics, we have the best. It's still hard for a musician because you got to get your music out there, you got to get your music sold, you got to book venues. As a comedian, if you have six million followers and you see in your comments you got eight hundred thousand comments and you're out there selling your own merch and this, are you just send the club your analytics and they say we'll book you? Yep, because comedy right. clubs, man, whether they're good or bad, they're only in the business of selling food, drinks, tickets. It's not about comedy. It Whatever is a cleverly smells. hidden restaurant. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't sell food and you don't sell <laughs> yeah. drinks, it's still about yes. selling tickets. That's it's right. It's about that. So, mm -hmm. like you say, if you got if you got a llama that has six million people who love this llama, and you say this llama is coming to a comedy club and six million people want to take pictures with this llama, then yo, I'm gonna try to see if I can open for that llama. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's getting booked. <laughs> They got change the name from the funny bone to funny farm. Bring the llama. <laughs> yeah, the llama. I, I'm with you, man. I but when it comes to like acting and all that, I, I do believe there's gatekeepers. I believe there's people, mm -hmm. who, you know, because he talked about his 300 comedians coming. So if I'm if I'm and I'm just saying Ice Cube, I ain't yeah. saying I'm not you, I'm using him as an example. Mm -hmm. But if I walk in, Ice Cube is like, oh, I'm cool with Chris Tucker. And let's just say last night, cat Ice Cube spoke to cat and cat blew him off. I ain't putting him in no movie. You know what I'm saying? Easily, like, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's like that. But I will say this to any Orlando comic listening to this show. We don't gatekeep. We don't need, we don't care about y'all that much. Mm -mm. <laughs> just, Damn. Don't, we don't, for real. We don't, yeah. we, we trying to, we trying to get our own career off the ground for me to block you. Like he said, for me to work yeah. at and we boat, still the in the alley. game with you. Hey dog, uh, I've been headlining for six years. I don't have a feature because I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> you think I'm gatekeeping? I say whoever you want to book with me, that's fine. Yeah, you know, Bro, like, we, it doesn't matter. I love the fact that uh I don't have the power you think I have. I yeah, can't keep not at all. working nowhere. No, but I tell you this: if you horrible at something, and you and you're not good at comedy, and they say, "Hey, Miguel, I got I got funny Frank. He wants to." Oh, oh, absolutely not. That dude's horrible. And that then is true. That's I will fact. tell you this much too. If you call me up and say, "Hey, man, they wanted me to feature for you," and you said no, I'll say, "Yeah, man, I don't, I don't think you're good." Yeah, I don't think you're ready. And then it's just yeah. quiet. Now, <laughs> I don't care quiet. though. And then here's the thing: there's lots of people out there that I don't like their material that are way more successful than me and doing all that stuff. And good because I'm not the millions of people out there. This is about other people, but. If you never can win a crowd over, if you're not consistently funny, then yeah. you're the gatekeeper. Yeah. And you're keeping yourself from moving forward. Yeah. Amen. I love that. Yes, I'm not doing it. You are. Well, but in Hollywood, you. yeah, man. Oh, 100% Hollywood. 100%. And, 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 like, and, and I don't know how Cat, I remember him addressing that there's like mini cabals and stuff. And that is how I think about it too. I don't, it's the, I never think of it being, you know, the president of Hollywood and he's sitting there smoking a cigar. Him, not him. But it's clicks. It's how everything goes in life. And, and if people aren't just money motivated, if they're socially motivated, they're going to click up. This is one reason why you should always be. Uh, the best representation of yourself anywhere you go mm -hmm. and as professional and kind as you can be, because mm -hmm. I know this from my own career, there have been times when a club owner has asked a bartender about me and the bartender's like, Oh, that guy was nice. And that's it. That's the reason I got the weekend over somebody else because me and Ken were going up for it. And they said, what about those two guys? They said, Oh, I don't really know about Ken. I never talked to him. What about Miguel? Oh, Miguel was nice. Well, yeah. You know what? Bring him, bring the nice guy. You know, I don't want to risk it. That is such a great point. I'm glad you brought it up, Miguel, because people uh, who, who don't do comedy may not realize when we're trying to get booked certain places and when we go through there one time, these club owners and managers ask the wait staff Bro. their opinion, not only Dude. on how funny we are, but how did how were they treated? Hey, yeah. hey, I, by mistaken identity, I, I didn't get to work a club for almost two years. 
Really? And then really? when they finally realized I wasn't the comedian they were talking about, I've been working at club now for 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah, so, yeah, that is that's funny. Yeah. That, that, that one person you. can be like, nah, he was terrible. He was, nah, don't bring him back. Mm-hmm. And, you, and your ass will not come back. I got a booking. I got a booking for a whole weekend because I had just emailed the owner of the club. I said, hey, you know, and I gave him my dates for like three months away. And he called me right up after the email went through. He said, hey, let me ask you this. Are you free this weekend? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I just didn't. You know, you know, you never send availabilities for like the weekend that's coming up. Because you, you, like, you don't think yeah. anybody's going to yeah, have your book yet. I said, yeah, man, I am. He said, you want to come? You want to come and guest spot the whole weekend? I said, yeah. I said, that'd be great. I came up there. I went and it was in Jacksonville, North Carolina. I did a guest spot the whole weekend. This was, nice. uh, um, what was the bowling alleys over there? The, the nice ones, guys, if you're listening. The nice bowling alleys. Uh, the, <laughs> the latitude, the comedy club. Latitude 360. Yeah. yeah. This is when latitude. they went like independent. When they weren't with, with bonkers anymore. And they mm-hmm. were trying to keep it going. And all it was, was he said, yeah, I just fired the dude who was supposed to uh, feature for us because he went on social media making all these jokes about our venue and how he was just doing this for the money and this and this and he goes your email popped up he goes and i remembered that you were a nice guy that was it right there that was it yeah that's it man so long story short we're not keeping you from anything and there's ways to circumvent the system nowadays social media how evil it may be is also an avenue you can use to get your stuff out there and actually get work so I'm just telling you that. Now we got about a minute and a half before we have to go. I'll always love hanging with you, gentlemen. Uh, where are you guys gonna be this weekend so everybody can come out and see you? This weekend, I'm going to be at Side Splitters hanging out at the uh Suncoast Comedy Festival or, or Sunshine Comedy Festival. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna be at Side Splitters in Tampa hanging out. I'm also gonna be at Side Splitters over Ken. Where's the other side splitters? Wesley Chapel. Wesley Chapel, Wesley Chapel. Uh, Geek Easy. I'm just gonna be at all the shows. Uncle Lazy's in town. Cam Patterson's in town. Bianca Parado's in town from Austin. Uh, it's gonna be a great, great uh, festival. So please check it out. Jake Rika's back in town with it. Nice. Uh, yeah, the, all, all the guys from here, man. Cap Wright, uh, Christoph Jean. So uh, Jari, Jari's gonna be there. So if if you want to see some of the best Orlando comedians and some of the best comics in the Tampa area, man, go to the Sunshine Comedy Festival and go check out. And please go to Side Splitters, support Side Splitters, one of the best clubs on that coast. Nice. Ken, where are you going to be, brother? LOL Lounge, Winter Haven, Friday and Saturday is um, shows at 8 o'clock. Go to lol.comedy and you get tickets. Nice, man. I'm actually going to be in Point Siena, my old stomping ground where I used to live on Saturday. I'm going to be with Spunky Robinson. He's actually hosting the show. It's for One Mic Management. Y'all come check out my social media to get tickets. Thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget to follow us on social media media that's right real last on all your platforms now can't tell them what to do brother take your ass to bed we out